What is going on everyone, Tutorial Tim here, and today we're gonna go ahead and build out the four navigation rail component variants here. And here we have the default view and so on and so forth. So we'll go ahead and get started with this default view. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new frame from scratch, set the width to 72 and the height to 43 to align with this default element. And then I'm gonna copy these properties and then paste them, which is just the background style. And then what I can do is hit enter on my keyboard and hit command C and then paste all those elements in here. And then what I can do is uh, group all four of these navigation rail items here. And then once I have those grouped, that's great. Then I'm gonna go to my parent level frame, hit shift A, and then that adds auto layout and it increases the width of this is from 72 to 73, which we'll have to address. But before that, I wanna select my divider and ensure that the fill container's height is set to fill container. So that way when the height of this uh, navigation rail expands, increases in height, the divider is responsive. So now that that problem's solved, that's great. We can go ahead and now apply the proper spacing here. So what I can do is grab this auto layout frame, which wraps all of these uh, navigation rail items and change that width to 71. So that way the entire frame itself is set to a width of 72. So it adheres to our previous element. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just ensure that all of the spacing has been applied, the appropriate spacing. So we need a padding of eight pixels on our element. So if I go and select this frame, add a padding to the top, set that to eight, and now all of the spacing is, is even there. And we can go ahead and rename this component, uh, the soon to be component, delete the old one, and in with the new main component. And then I'm gonna go ahead and proceed to creating this rail with a, a fab, a floating action button, so all I have to do is again, create a new frame, set the width to 72 and the height to 483. And then I can go ahead and align these, holding down option W with both of them selected, copy the background property, and then select this, hit enter, command C, command V. Um, one thing I can do is actually remove this frame, it's unnecessary. Um, and then what I can go ahead and do is add auto layout now. Or actually I'm gonna group all of these buttons first and then add auto layout. Uh, so now I've added auto layout to these elements. What I'm gonna do is make sure that this is top and center. Then I'm gonna select that divider again and uh, with the parent frame now I'm gonna add auto layout and then I can grab this, select this divider and ensure that the, the height is set to fill container and then I can go ahead and drag this down and test it out and it's responsive so that's great. And then I'll go ahead and re-add auto layout to this and what I can do is set this to uh, 16 comma zero. So that sets a padding of 16 to the top and bottom and zero to the left and right. And now everything is up to spec just about. We just need to double check the spacing between these items within this frame and it's set to four pixels. We want that to be set to zero. And now everything is aligned appropriately. All we have to do is copy that naming convention and paste that. And that is all you have to do for the rest of the variants as well. None of them are different. Uh, it just visually different, but the construction in regards to implementing auto layout is exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here and challenge you to creating those other variants. I really hope you enjoyed this. Please share this with others learning uh, auto layout or design systems. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.